What? Why are Whoa. we still here? This an orf. Just to suffer. <laughs> Every what is this flag? What the heck? I'm just rubber banding all over the place. Wait. Even my fingers. Um, hold up. Uh, 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 where's my lost. weapon? Why can't I see my shots? I, what? Hi, res? What? Where's my weapon? Where am I? I can't even see my mom. This is my first game! What the heck? You can't make this up. You actually cannot make this up. Okay, is it gonna be the same in ranked? Few moments later. Are you kidding me? Hi, res! Why? No, 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 no. I might just close my game. Not nah, we were starting. We were starting. Look at that. Good job, hi res. You did it. You made a flawless game. Beautiful. Yo, Raven, dude. Man of the f***ing hour. I was just watching your video. Raven trick was right. <laughs> you know, I'll be honest, Raven. The the part I agreed about most in your whole entire video was... Oh my god. <laughs> These just make themselves look bad. This is actually embarrassing right now. This is embarrassing. We have people who want to watch me play the game. I want to play the game and it just won't work. You couldn't even make this shit up. Raven Trick comes to my channel and the game breaks. I've been live for 25 minutes and I hadn't played a single match yet. I got a deserter, okay. Oh, now I'm part of the problem. I'm getting all negative. Hey yo, hey yo, internet. Yes, it's that time again. The time where I rant about the state of a game which is near and dear to my particular taste. And that taste clearly being toxic relationships because I can't put it down! I'm addicted, so I can't quit! But wait, this time it's different, I promise. You see, Paladins has actually gone through some drastic changes in the first half of 2023. And honestly, there's some surprisingly good changes. I've waited this long to actually talk about them because I wanted to see if they would last. And my patience has once again been proven right because boy is there a mountain of issues which followed. This project is more of my follow-up to the History of Paladins video, which you can check through the link in the description below, by the way. Only fully up to date and with all the huge new developments. This whole video will be from the perspective of a long time, six years soon, veteran of the game, with several Grandmaster and Master accounts, even in the last Season 6 patch. Okay. But enough beating around the bush, and well, let's just get straight into it. So, as you may have seen from posts on Twitter, Reddit, and other social medias in the Paladins category, a lot of people were surprised by the sudden growth of Paladins player base during the first few months into 2023. And that led to some users speculating that it may just have been something or someone. Botting viewer numbers. Was something we knew we wanted to do for a long time. So once it got the green light, it was an easy call. Creating a ton of bot accounts. While this theory, in my personal opinion, is ridiculous and no one would actually go through the effort of doing that, let alone a company that has not cared to do something. So in, um, the last six years? What other possibilities could there be? How could this happen? Well, let me put on my detective cap and let's dive right in. So, as we can clearly see, the new stats coincide with the upload of my Paladin's History video. This, without a doubt, proves that we all single-handedly saved Paladins. There's really no other explanation. That's it. The end. Thanks for watching. Paladin's is now great again. All thanks to yours truly. But on a more serious note, during the two months of rapid player growth, Paladins was both trending on Twitter, TikTok, and even YouTube with yours truly contributing to the topic. It all simply made the perfect storm with the announcement of a new patch, where Evil Mojo promised to bring back old features. Features that everybody loved, but a bit on that later. Also, Overwatch 2 has just come out at this point, and the servers were... Dying, to say the least. I, I mean, literally on fire. Somehow worse than even Paladin nice servers lag. at the time. Wait a second. Wait, I'm actually in the game. Wait, I'm actually in the game now? Got him. All right. Wait a sec. It just put me back in queue. Bro, what the f- Let's see how long this takes to go down. Let's see how long it takes to go down. Maybe, maybe it'll go down fast. 
<laughs> so I personally noticed a lot of Overwatch players downloading Paladins and playing that instead. Paladins is a better game than Overwatch, and I believe Paladins has succumbed to the same curse afflicting both Nickelback and Arby's. The internet has told you to not like these things, but behind closed doors, we know they are good. Combine these new players with curious players coming back to their once favorite game, and BAM! You have the answer to that spike in growth. But what enticed old players to come back in the first place? Fun isn't something one considers when balancing the universe. But this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. Look at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Payload's back. Yep. <laughs> the mode that most of us asked for years and years and years, only to be bamboozled and not have it added back, has actually returned. Of course, they returned it in the classic Evil Mojo and Hyrus fashion, with only one map because the rest of them crashed PS4s, and only on certain days would you even be able to play the game mode. Okay, but why though? But they did it. They added it back. And they added the rest of the maps along with plans to enable the mode permanently in the near future. Even if the majority of the player base does not start playing this game mode instead of Siege, the point is what's more important. They actually did what the big part of their community demanded for so long, going against their personal thoughts on it and desires to only do what they want to do. We've taken ownership, and now we control the destiny of Paladins. We're telling the stories we want to tell and releasing the champions we want to release. More focusing on analytical data alone. So yeah, a huge dub for Evil Mojo, and I think Paladins altogether. Alongside of this, they even added back events like the Furia platforming one, which is such a nice minigame and clearly shows that they could have done this the entire time, but just chose not to. Yet again, another welcome change. It's a limited time game mode that cycles between other ones that we already have, and honestly, again, another Paladins dub. Nice. But. That's enough of that. Let's look at a side of Paladins that most of us have now come to accept as a core feature. Bugs. Hey, look at that, chat! Look! For those who say the game doesn't have bugs. Couldn't save him. Couldn't save him. What? Excuse me? Uh, huh? Alright, high res, thank you, I suppose. What? Huh? on your man, homie. Ah, I tried to peek through the door, man. Can't make it. Can't make it. Stuck. Out of my way, son. Door stuck. Door stuck. Please. I'm being some border city right now. What? Nope. What? What? So. No. Just regular Watch gameplay. Out. Wait. It's bugging! Oh my god, he's not using the bot! Never he kills someone, he just gets a kill reset. Look at him! I can't believe the dude, I don't think I guess too. Like, we can be fuck up you, sir, man. <laughs> so funny! <laughs> what the heck, dude? Okay, I think this I means it's time to stop. Cool. It's it's time to stop playing, dude. It's time to stop! Yeah, so this is still a huge problem for Paladins, and it's growing with every update. In fact, they've returned old bugs they've fixed since beta, to bugs that rarely happened now appearing almost every second game. It really gives off the vibe that the game code's unraveling before our very own eyes. Now, I will state I have no clue if they are still prioritizing bug fixing or not, but I won't lie to you, it's gotten worse. I mean, every stream I have, which you can view in the live category of my channel, contains at least one game-breaking bug during my entire gaming session, with some going as as far as completely removing my weapon shots, decals, and arms. Oh, we got the bug. Let's go. We got the uh, invisible bombs bug. And her arms are right there. Now my arms are on me. Now my arms are off of me. Yeah. Yeah, that's paladins for you. That's definitely paladins. Okay. Oh, yeah, and my right click and the explosions of my bombs make uh, missing textures. <laughs> It's actually pretty crazy how bugs such as this are accepted by Evil Mojo, with them not even attempting to say anything about it on any official posts like they used to do at least last year. It just feels like they completely don't care or have decided to stop drawing attention to them, as months later none of those mentioned bugs have been fixed, with a lot of them sticking around for years. I mean, some bugs like Grover Vine Tech or Azanzel that allows him to teleport through walls all the way to point. When the wind has huh? We have the programmers, 
programmers have now become competitive features. <laughs> so bad, West! So bad! That's how long they've been in the game. So yeah, be aware of what you're getting into. If you get annoyed over bugs, this game is definitely not for you. However, where Evil Mojo fails to update us on bugs they are tackling, updates are a completely different story. <laughs> With their wins I've already mentioned, they also ended up adding the long-awaited custom game customization update. And while it's not as in-depth as Overwatch or TF2, where you could basically create entirely new game modes through custom game servers, it's still incredibly fun. You can add jump height, control ultimates, choose same champions, and so much more. The only problem is most people don't even know the update actually happened, so no one is creating the custom games. So you know what, here's my call to action, right? If you enjoy them or wanted to try out custom games in general, start creating them. Trust me, it's one of the most entertaining game modes in Paladins currently, and a great place to simply enjoy the game for what it's become. What the? Okay, this just looks stupid. Oh no! You look like a bunch of fleas. Jump at the same time. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. It'll, it'll be great. I really do believe there's a lot of promise in the new custom game features, and they should actually develop it further. Give players more freedom, time to mess around with the game settings, give back the OB60 card buffs maybe? I don't know. There are a lot of these past assets they could use for this, but now an issue you can't run away from even in custom games, and that is the server lag. <laughs> All crashed. Nice. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the lower above is like just the word of time. You don't like specific just like buttons. Oh great, I crashed. Great. With the most recent Paladins update, this has become all too apparent. But Paladins has by far the worst servers I have experienced in any game. I'm not joking, it's that bad. From games being dropped completely in both casuals ranked to losing you TP and giving you deserter, no fault of your own. I can't accept Q. Am I getting deserter? No, I don't lose TP for not accepting. I just get deserter, right? Nice. It, it literally appeared last second. Yo, high res. Iris, nice game. I lost TP! To games lagging so bad that you feel like you're playing at a thousand ping. Only the ping stays normal. Some days, of course, it's actually stable, and Paladins is an enjoyable experience overall. But on others, and there's too many others, the game becomes unplayable, and it's a server issue first. It affects everybody in the game on a major scale, so what could be the cause? <laughs> Well, let's first take a look at what happened during eSports Days of Paladins, and you might be asking, but Raven, what does eSports that failed three years ago have to do with today's server problems? Well, it's quite simple, my dear viewer. You see, Paladins eSports had several sponsors who made it possible, and in that tangle of suitors, there was one particular one that had a pretty major role in the game's performance. Can you see it? It's right there. No, 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 a bit to the left. Ah, there it is. INAP. Wow. Powered by who? Sorry, who are these guys? Why? What happened to INAP, guys? Where, where, where did INAP go? The company that provided Paladins the competitive edge it needed to form a um, slightly more stable server experience. I just no regged that entire ult into the parrot. Sure, they weren't perfect by a long shot, but it definitely did the job. So, what happened to this prestigious organization? Well, as a lot of others who have touched high-res products, they were hit with the dreaded high-res curse. Who killed Paladins? And unlike the lucky ones that only get away with emotional damage, EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! The company ended up going bankrupt. BANKRUPTCY! And high-res moved Paladins to a different server provider. One that has now gone down in Paladins history as the most notorious one of them all. Why? Well, server crashes every other game, not being able to jump. I'm kinda edging it. I, I just lagged off the map, man. Movement ability simply stopped working. No! Just regular Watch gameplay. Rubber banding happening on every single champion. Oh, 
great shots. Unable to connect to the server itself. Oh, no, 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 you have ever split a buck. The game actually wants you to be a buck one trick. Can I get heals? It might be helpful. Oh, play this okay. game. What, the, what is this? And so, so, so much more. And the game's gone! I rest. These problems lasted for an entire year. And at the end of it all, you will never guess what they blamed. The barrack turrets. Why are you bullying me? Yeah, they said deployables were to blame and due to some problems with the code at the time. The flawless code that Paladins has? Don't say it ain't so. And so after this magical revelation, did the servers improve upon the patch? Well, yes, but actually no. See, the problem wasn't just the deployables, that was definitely making it worse. But the server provider was simply a downgrade. There's no easy way around it, would be my best guess that with this opportunity to change servers, they decided to go for a more budget version, as Paladins was now clearly heading towards a decline. And with esports being near its end, they may not have been so keen on investing more resources back into the game. The thing is, Iris didn't actually tell me this information. In fact, the reason they gave us for switching servers was actually a little bit different. Apparently, for an entire year, they tried to blame he who shall not be named. Unless I wanted be demonetized. Now, why they didn't mention the other stuff? Um, I don't know. That's completely up to speculation. So that's that. We're done, right? The mystery solved! Hooray! And the fix made our servers actually better with jumping being added back to the game. What a next generation feature. Truly the pinnacle of gaming. Amazing. There is, however, one more reason as to why so many of you have experienced Paladins crashing when in the ranked lobby over and over again. Or maybe you've noticed it every time you see somebody disconnect in the lobby screen. A reason that many Paladin streamers don't even want to talk about. <laughs> We're almost at one hour queue, dude. Yo, Abu Kaka, stop being a f loser. You're she's wasting your life away doing this. This cheating. <laughs>
We're all being negative here, just talking about the drop packs or whatever. Hey, thank you guys for stopping by. I, I don't deserve to have you yourself after not streaming, but I just I just know this is gonna happen every single time I go live, so I just like when I go live I just hate it, you know? Yo, Abu Kaka, stop being a f loser. You're she's wasting your life away doing this. But at this point Hyrus was tired of his shenanigans. Now I'm really mad! And they were ready to bring down the banhammer on him with the strength of five Zeus's in one. That's it, no more playing around. Hyras removed their gloves and completely removed the method that Abukalid had used to drop back games. Is this what you want? Come on, strike me down, Zeus. You don't have the ball. In the form of a change that was quite controversial, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. All you need to know is it's done. It's finally solved, right? And surely this time they finally got him, right? Right, right. Imagine shooting a man with your last bullet, and he stands there, unfazed! They can crash all the servers at the same time, and they can't spectate our games anymore. What's this? I don't know, man. Wrong again! After this small delay, he simply moved to a better form of DDoSing, where he would just take every single IP of the Paladin servers and DDoS them all at once. You know, why go for specific ones? Just hit them all! Where does he get them? Well, that's the easy part. You can literally see the ones you connect to through Task Manager. And I'm not even gonna mention the VPN services and other programs that are aimed at games, which not only allow you to see but pick any server IP in your region. But surely Hyrus would have some protection for their servers, like any basic DDoS protection, right? 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 It'd be me too! You just heal. The bear can't be dismounted. Yeah, that's a very <laughs> he good can't one. be dismounted. Well, if they do, he must just be the best hacker in gaming. A prodigy, if you will. Because they have yet to stop him to this day. And he continues to do as he will, with Hyrez just pretending it's all okay? As the entire community knows of him at this point, due to the biggest paladin streamers being his preferred targets. Man, I know what you're thinking, you shouldn't give such individuals more attention, as they clearly desperately crave it, due to their incredible lack of a father figure. But listen, they already got that attention long ago. Although, to be fair, as I am more of an objective person than one to point out the obvious, Abu Khalid actually does more than your average cheater. He's found publicly helping with the creation of these various cheats and methods of DDoS through all kinds of cheating communities, yeah, subreddits of course, and it seems he's not only involved with paladins but other games as well. He's just obsessed with paladins for whatever reason, aren't we all? This also just goes to show how many people cheat in paladins due to the abundance of methods and tools to do so. I mean, look at this. He literally missed every <laughs> shot there. This is a good thing to show. In general, my goal is to simply highlight how critical this issue is, so hopefully Hi-Rez will actually look into this, instead of giving their classic we're working on it answer, and proceeding to do absolutely nothing about it. Just name another game the size of Paladins that struggles with all their servers being successfully DDoSed, both in ranked and casual for close to half a year. Let's go! Our first dodge, guys! First dodge ever. Good one. Uh, 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 dude. Dude. Another touch, let's go. Oh, let's go. These dodges are stacking up now, boys. Oh, GG. You guys are kind of even. But, oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hi, NA. Thank you for 40, 59 minutes, NA. Now, to be fair, they have taken some action against cheaters, and older methods have now become impossible. But those patches are so far and few apart that dedicated developers get new methods out faster than Hyrus can patch them. As for Abukalid, the guy hangs out in Twitch chats, Reddits, and openly mocks paladins to this day. 
<laughs> and really, that's all I can really say about them. On a side note, I do completely understand why some people would be fumed about cheaters and people using scripts. And while I myself consider it to be a pretty despicable thing to do, I still think they're redeemable. Whether you develop scripts or are just a casual user, it's a cheap thrill that will cost you more than it will provide. You can definitely put your time to better use and still make something of yourself in this short but full of possibilities line. But that's just a parting thought for any of you that might be watching. Get ready. So, how has Evil Mojo attempted to solve these issues, if any attempt was made at all? Well, for one, they announced a new partners program and even created a private Discord for partner streamers, along with content creators to submit feedback. Problem is, they select who gets into that Discord, and we know how selective they can be. Including with their employees, apparently. Because during this crucial time of development, and new systems about to be implemented into the game, that revolve around the community aspect, some of the Evil Mojo employees saw players and former community delegates talking on Twitter saying their game isn't as good as they would like it to be, and decided I don't want peace, I want problems, always! Full sending it into a unified and complete crusade against users with their full names and all. No, Cyberbolt didn't do anything wrong. Cyberbolt was just, we gave him a chance to be nice, and he took that chance and just monetized to be the benefit of himself. He doesn't care about anybody, that's all. That's all. And trust me, they didn't go easy. They named and shamed their way on both Twitter, live streams, and even Reddit, thinking all the way, oh, what a good keyboard warrior for a company that pays me the legal minimal wage and finds me completely expendable, I am. Not realizing that they just pissed off not only the small paladins community, but the lazy Twitter users and Redditors, who had nothing better to do on that fine lazy Sunday afternoon, but respond back all day. And boy was it glorious. I mean, entire chains of tweets replying to other tweets to other tweets, all unified by one goal, which simply could be boiled down to, lol, bad game. But at the end of the day, Hi-Res did actually respond and set things straight, even going as far as firing one of the many fall guys that they could have chosen. Wow, you sure showed us you're a great and, um, willing to yeah, fire fine. underpaid employees company. More than 300 times the size of our biggest siege map today. Please, Todd, it's not possible. Next, you hop on your mount and you start exploring. Think of my starving children. I beg you, Todd. But that's not easy with 100 players all fighting to win. Instead of actually addressing the problem and possibly looking at what could have been the cause? You know, the courses you actually put them through, or the roles and time you assign. Honestly, I think it's stupid to fire somebody over an outburst like that, but hey, it is what it is, I suppose. And it's my friendly reminder again to never engage people as a developer of the game, or a key public figure of any IP, with Twitter debates and arguments. Don't waste your breath, it will always end badly. But probably even worse is the fact that this partner system update happened due to them shutting down AOC. Yeah. In short, AOC were selected by the people for the people. Hi everyone. Hello everyone, my name is Hey, what's up everyone? Hello everybody, my name is Fish. Hello, I'm Infernal Dragon. Hello, my name is Nick. I am Hi guys, this is Big Mac. Dan had actual meetings with the game devs to discuss what could be changed. This partner system, on the other hand, isn't even that. There's no promise of a change, but a we-will-look-into-it mentality, meaning this is just a direct downgrade. As for the drop hacking, well, they had big ideas. Hyra solved this swiftly after three months by removing Spectate, a key feature that allowed you to record cheaters in ranked, stating it was how drop hackers shut down streamers' games. The universe's biggest questions require the universe's biggest brains. This is Don. This is Tom. This is Big Brain. And that was the end of that, right? Nozzy, no! Ambi was right. Nice game, Nozzy. I'm really sorry for your TP, bro. That's unlucky, actually, dude. The game up online. Nope. Instead, they just started DDoSing every IP available and creating an even bigger problem for Evil Mojo. Why they have not brought back replay yet is beyond me. The change was pointless and you can now freely cheat in game without any hope of being caught. So enjoy, I guess? Honestly, Paladins is about to become Warzone. I do have to mention that there was an actual change to the system after this rise of cheaters happened, but it's one I'm very suspicious of. You see, everybody suddenly started getting the message, an action has been taken against a player you reported, and they received this message en masse. I mean, we still do, in fact. But when I log into all my five alternative accounts, on some where I just haven't played in a long time, I have the same exact message. Hmm. Yeah. So how legitimate this message is, is it 
sent out globally when a cheater is banned? Is it fake to calm down the masses? I honestly couldn't tell you, and your guess is as good as mine. But what I do know is for an entire patch, Hyrus actually did do something about it. They grabbed the banned shotgun and started wildly firing it in every direction they could see. Which was the exact problem because they clearly had a blindfold on. Because they missed every single cheater around, with many of them sticking around for half a year to this day. But you know who did get hit? Well, certainly hit every player who said naughty words to their friends in DMs. Stop right there, criminal scum! Nobody breaks the law on my watch! Good job, Hyrus, you saved us! I get banned? Instead of, it, instead of a cheater getting banned, I get banned. This cheating! See that? He's killing the healer first, because he's smart. And with no statements from Hyrus to this day about what they plan to do, it's really anybody's guess. Have they given up? Will they switch server providers and finally pay for quality server protection? Maybe they will go full John Wick on the person DDoSing their servers and make an example out of them as an actual company to show they aren't a complete joke. <sighs> Look, I understand they may have the reasons, but at least be honest with your community that you can't improve the servers instead of just being relatively silent about it. Will any of this improve? Probably not. But it's really anybody's guess. But now let's take a step back for a small sidetrack. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, when people say that high res evil mojo, they don't ban people, they don't do that, this, 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 that. I get it. I understand the frustration and I completely have the same exact feelings. But that's just straight up not true. No matter how much we might feel that nobody ever gets banned, I've recently seen people who start bug abusing, cheating, you know, etc. And they immediately get banned the next day. Sure, there are cases where people will slip through and continue playing the game, but if you have the mentality of never reporting them thinking that nothing will ever happen, then nothing ever will. Because in my experience, every time I clip someone who's done something wrong and send it to high res, they ban that person. Well, yeah, yeah, you might say, Raven, they know you. Maybe, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But the point stands, if you actually take the time to submit a ticket, take the time to actually clip what they've done and provide sufficient evidence, I'm 100% certain that something will be done about them. Which, yes, it kind of contradicts my point, but it really doesn't. If you've lived a single day in this world at all, you'll understand that two things can be true at the same time. Is Evil Mojo's ban system perfect? No, absolutely not. But they are trying, and that's simply the truth. Like in this example where somebody's been bug abusing to respawn instantly. Bomb. Bomb. Surprise! Что? That very day, hi res pants this person and everybody that was related to this incident. Maybe they were watching my stream, or maybe I reported them, who knows? Who's to tell? In either case, they do actually act fast, and people who have been getting away with it just know it's because you've been lucky. Yes, there are some special cases where people can actually evade bans and are good at that, but that is not the majority. Usually people cheating are just Clara! blatantly stupid and meet their end quite quickly. But now how Evil Mojo treats their community aside, what is this remaining community like itself? Uh, you need to find Shut the Evie, monkey, Evie, monkey. You're a monkey! Go play among no, you go play among us! Nothing to more like not that. Yeah. Well then, um, let's just start with the good. Most people in Paladins just play the game in their free time and enjoy a few matches before getting off to do something else. They aren't addicted to the game itself and find it enjoyable overall. They don't run into the game breaking bugs as much, and if they do, they consider it a rare occurrence and are just overall pleasant people to run across. Honestly, my experience with the Paladins community, for the most part, has been just that, pretty good. There are many Discord communities, including ours, link in the description by the way, which provide help getting into the game, discuss good builds, and so on, with some even going as far as organizing competitive tournaments for you and your teams, where anybody is welcome. The community is definitely alive in that regard, with fan art being made consistently, and lots of people still enjoying the game more than some other hero shooters on the market. But not everybody is like that. because there are people that have played the game for five years consecutively and notice every small or huge flaw that it may have. Players who've watched the game fall apart and not deliver on many, many promises made, yet still too in love with the idea of Paladins. And yes, you didn't mishear me, I said the idea of Paladins, or what it could be, too addicted to actually quit it. And I'm addicted, so I can't quit!
people like me. Oh, come on, me off. I was 1 HP anyways, it's fine. Oh no, he glitched me. No! He unintentionally glitched me. What a great game! We did push. <laughs> oh, the Vic! The Vic! Oh no! Oh no! Hey, lower it! Lower it! Lower it! Lower the wall! Lower the wall! Lower the... Dude! Press the ability! I hate this game so much! Anyone gonna f shoot him? Mom, go for it, boy, boy, boy. No! no, 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 no. Shalin, Shalin, hands off, Shalin. Okay, okay. No! 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 I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, lots of us in the content creator camp are in fact said veteran players of the game, and of course we will always have complaints about it. While I try my best to be constructive and provide not only the negatives, but always to improve said negatives, or ideas on how to do it, along with the things that the game does right, I understand that some people may just not be able to hold back on stream, and I definitely have been frustrated with Paladins to the point I could not hold back the, uh, non-constructive criticism. Always amazes me how they can't solve the bugs and magically create new ones. Yep, garbage game. I'm just gonna say it straight up, dude. It's a garbage game. Like, they actually destroy the game consistently with every patch. Nothing you can do about it. Alright, there we go. Two dead at various times. Sadly, this is the reality for the majority of longtime players. You just start to see it in a different light when you actually try to take it seriously as a competitive game. Because to have a competitive and yet enjoyable experience at the same time, you need the game to, well, work. Or work at least more than 60% of the time, unlike Paladins, which of course is flawless and works 20% of the time. Sometimes, random number of course, don't take it seriously, but that's just what it feels like. And while this player class is just a bit cynical, there is that one that I'd say exists in most online games. And Paladins is definitely not an exception, as its broken nature turns some of these longtime players into less than favorable individuals. <laughs> Oh, look at that! I died! Because they're not healing! I have no help! Please, 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 Wait for your ball here, Luckily, these type of players are a rare occurrence, but of course an online game will always have them. But why bring them up? Well, because Hyrus takes ages to actually ban these individuals, even when reported through official ticket systems. It seems they are willing to give more chances in some of these cases while banning others for joking with a friend in DMs. Which, yes, they apparently read your DMs in-game without the person even being reported that game. See, when it's a manual review, Evil Mojo will simply go through your logs and use the trigger words as a reason to ban you. And this has happened to several people I know. So maybe update your rules for banning users? And take support tickets with video proof more seriously. As for the response time on these support tickets, I'd say it's pretty average. Not horrible, not fast, just okay. At least in my experience. Final round. But now on to something actually positive. Game balance. 
Paladin's balance has honestly reached peak in my humble opinion. These past few years, and especially the upcoming year, most champions have become in line with others. Some people just refuse to play some champions for whatever reason. Unlike you, I don't need enhanced more to reach peak performance. Even though they are just as good as some others, there are only a handful of champions that were permabanned this season, like Bomb King, Vatu, Torvald, and Inara, with three of them getting nerfs in the upcoming patch. And in the past patch, when Seven was broken, he was also fixed by Evil Mojo. They are doing it at a faster rate, and honestly, even with the insane buffs to Inara and Torvald, they made them actually viable. The Torvald buff? The Torvald buff? The Torvald buff. <laughs> Can you hurry up? For even you to feel shame sometimes. Why are you walking so slow? Because I want sympathy. The balance team is definitely killing it out there, and it makes me sad for them that the rest of the game is dragging all their hard work down. They listen to the community and try to improve or fix champions that have gotten out of line, while still keeping their unique playstyles. All I'd have to request in terms of balance changes is return all the mobility they stole years ago, from Sky to Flying Bomb King. I want to see it all back. Let's go, just send it! But what game can exist without a Good economy. And surely such a long standing game as Paladins has a stable and growing in game economy. You're broke! You're Ah, the Paladin's economy. It survived so many changes from normal gold to essence, back to gold to OP64 loot boxes, and now back to gold once more. Come to think of it, the word survived is probably not the best one to use for this scenario. I'd say it's more of a begging you to kill it as it slowly crawls towards the nearest cliff it can dive off of. You see, the inflation of gold in Paladins became so bad for veteran players that we simply became too rich while also being too poor. Well, having all champions unlocked and their prices staying the same, as it would affect the new players already struggling to get said champions in the first place, makes gold for veteran users just useless. And I'll give it to them, Evil Mojo has tried to solve this issue in the most primitive ways imaginable, from giving us million gold titles! You are watching this, it is likely you are a young man who is focused on improving yourself and becoming rich to live your dream life. You are part of the 1%. All the way to leveling up our champions with gold, which was one of the dumbest ideas I've seen in gaming so far, and I'm very happy that they actually managed to get rid of it, given it was uh, a bit too late, and we now have gold rank level 999 Saracis wandering around like nothing happened. <laughs> it's still going. It's gonna keep, it's gonna go on for a while. But the recent way is one I approve of, and in fact I think it was a genius idea overall, and that's the event pass level ups for gold. Honestly, it's one of the best things they could have come up with, and one of the best economy changes for veteran players that went under the radar. You can now always have your event pass maxed out for years to come, skipping grinding some altogether. However, on the other side of the coin, we have new players, and boy is the economy brutal and unforgiving towards new players. So on every new account that I make, I find that it's always so difficult to get champions in the game. It takes me months of gameplay to actually unlock any reasonable amount of champions. And a huge complaint in rank is the fact that a lot of players simply don't have the meta champions. And at the rate they release new ones, you will more than likely never have enough to unlock them all. This forces you to spend money on the Founders Pack, and in almost every case I've seen people do just that. In a way it's kind of pay to win, but Evil Mojo is actually quite smart about this, and does not add new champions to the ranked queue. Well, at least for an entire month. And in some cases even longer, meaning you will have enough time to farm that hard-earned gold for the newest baddie. Honestly, even if it hurts their bottom line, I still think they need to buff daily quest gold or twitch drops, really anything, for the new players to actually earn gold off of. And as a tip for all you new players, complete the tutorial along with other in-game achievements to actually get a hefty sum of cash. It's enough for almost a couple of champions right off the bat, and I might even make a separate video on who's actually worth investing your gold into. But that's for another time. And speaking of new players, how's the newest addition to Paladins doing? The console player base for whom Paladins drastically changed the core gameplay features, nerfed movement, and downgraded maps. The Switch. Don't let your kids watch it! Oh, come on! So everything we had to suffer as a player base to have Switch as a crossplay option, including Switch players themselves who had to suffer crashing and other various issues. This is here, here we go again. Here we go again. Nothing with this changed. I'm crashing on the first match in already. Is now thrown out the window along with my desire to even play the console in today's market. Thanks, Nintendo. <laughs> Okay. 
today, oh. and I'm really delighted to be part of this video. Yes, as of next patch, Paladins will no longer run on Switch. If you can even call it running before, more like crawling. Oh, yeah, it like might goodness. be my game, actually. Yeah. Oh, I'm like. Oh, yeah, it does. I'm it was like. They're, they're, dro they they're dropping. They're dropping. They're dropping. They, they are. Am I dead yet? But people who enjoy the game on said console will no longer have access to it in the next patch. So that's not only going to be a huge hit to the player base overall, but they also, seemingly relating to this, have announced they would be adding crossplay with aim assist to ranked PC. Core game feature that is coming this patch. And oh gosh, I'm actually scared to say this one a little bit. Ranked will be receiving full crossplay. I kid you not. This was taken with huge outrage, obviously, and hopefully they don't actually implement this terrible idea of a change, as it's just unfair to everybody in every regard. Aim Assist in Paladins is basically legal aimbot, if not even better, especially with the gyro functionality. At the end of the day though, the console queue has become smaller and console ranked would probably cease to exist if they don't go through with it. This really is the only logical reason I could possibly see them doing something like this. Okay, never mind. Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, all right. No, I can feel it. Whoever said it was, I can feel it. GG, go next. Yes, it happened. Evil Mojo ended up adding crossplay to ranked, and it couldn't have gone worse. But not for the reasons many of us expected. You see, PC players really do have an advantage over console players, both in FPS, reaction time, and performance overall. But the aim assist has not been changed. And this, in fact, helps console players actually put up a pretty tough fight against PC. But here's where it gets good. You see, Evil Mojo, in their naive ways, let PC players use controllers too, in effect, becoming said crossplay players. Only with, um, all the benefits of a $500,000 gaming PC. They simply said, if you can't beat them, join them. And then just went straight full rolling. Dirty console gaming peasants! <sighs> just ignore him and he'll go away. Peasants, I bring news! Join me in PC gaming and ascend to godhood! For you are weak and I am mighty! Witness, mortals, my overclocked i7, my 64 gigs of RAM, a graphics card- Don't they run on the windows or something? The thing is- <sighs> Yeah. FPS, reaction time, oh. huge pool of champions they can use, and now they added aim assist? Yeah, we all know where this is going. Come and get it! today here bringing you another video this one's going to be a short one just to show you what aim assist is on a controller so currently I have a Xbox controller hooked up to my computer and I'm going to show you how aim assist works certain characters have aim assist as you can see as I am strafing left the reticle keeps locked onto the target this is how aim assist helps with keeping your target when you're kind of up close and moving around kind of just helps keep it locked on. The poor console players did not stand a chance, and every time I'd see an actual stack of PS4 players trying to enjoy the game, I would simply stomp them for O, and that's without aim assist. Can you imagine what happens to these poor guys against actual Chad PC rollers? This is honestly a tragic change, and I'd rather lose to a real console player with aim assist than lose to a PC player who decided to dust off their old Xbox 360 controller and become the top one GM. Before two-time back-to-back blockbuster video game champion, Basically, I am a legendary, uh, I know, calm down, a legendary international video gaming superstar. I believe the best change that we can have happen for ranked, and one that would make it so much better, is removing the option for PC players to use controllers. Now I know, I can already hear it, Raven, Raven, but aim assist, it's not fair, you have to let PC players use it too. Listen, I've played almost every single day of this ranked crossplay split, and I've checked what device everybody was using, so this opinion of mine just solidifies even more, because the aim assist players I have trouble facing are always veteran PC players. As for 
for queue times and ranked, it's honestly popping off right now. No more 10 minute waiting periods, you now get a game in less than like one minute during peak hours. It's really gotten a lot better and we're seeing people that we've never faced before. So this can definitely work, but they need to patch it and patch it a few times. Probably do that fast before, you know, everybody decides they've had enough of the aim assist meta and just leaves. <laughs> And while we're on the topic of ranked, casual, crossplay, and matchmaking, how's that all doing in Paladins today, players? They had one, two, three, four, five smurfs on the enemy team. Five, every single person on the enemy team was a smurf. You could say it into Nyx, Queen of the Abyss. I think this realm is a marvelous place. It would be a shame to see it go up in flames. Enough of your childish banter. This is how you greet me after all these years. I let you have this realm. You turned your back on everything we believed in. Say, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Nyx's primary fire is realm. Nyx punches with such ferocity that the fabric of reality is broken by her swing, with abyssal energy exploding out from her swings and damaging enemies comp from Overwatch 1, or for an Overwatch 2 equivalent, the Winston Kitsune Rush comp that kind of plays together, well you won't be able to hide behind Nyx's ult fire is Rift Slash. Nyx slashes with mighty cloths. On detonation, his furious swipe tears open an abyssal rift, which damages and slows enemies caught within its dark influence. And for the first tank tool that is a larger snare that is easier to hit than let's say a Roadhog hook, or Orisa Javelin, the big ravenous vortex can be used to ground enemy flyers. Nyx's first ability is Abyssal Fortress. With not but a pointed finger, Nyx beckons the abyss into the realm. Raising an abyssal shield at a target location, she shields allies whether up close or at a distance. Barrier is intended for you to close the distance and play gaps, but even if it is on a short duration, you'll still be able to use it to snipe and bunker up. Nyx's second ability, is royal presence. Reveling in Nyx's royal presence has consequences for good and ill. Nyx summons a poison aura around her that damages enemies for a percentile of their max health. While active, any damage Nyx takes is converted, instead being dealt to her over the next four seconds with additional damage refreshing the duration. With his ultimate similar to Orisa, who automatically gets Fortify, Ramatra automatically gains his nemesis form, including his extra armor, which means you might want to pop it as it's going on cooldown to get an extra use out of it, running at his enemies, draining them of life. And then you have Alfonso. Now I know you're thinking, Reinhardt, right? No, he has a flamethrower, okay? And he can charge. And what's really cool about this guy is that he gets this Big shield. <laughs> yeah, while I'm usually hyped about the champions they add, and praise some of the unique abilities they give them, this time I can't help but side with people who are saying that she it was a Ramatra, a um, inspired abomination. From her punches, to her walls, to her extra shield health, and even her slowing feel, with the chains that pull in enemies towards you being the only unique thing about her. Well, that in the ultimate, I guess. But that one is just, uh, underwhelming. I'm not gonna lie to you. Personally, I think this is the worst champion Paladins has added in a while. She's the worst main tank as of writing this, and after a month of playtime, I'm yet to see a good Nyx player. Sure, you can still say she's pretty young, and came out not too long ago, but she's slow, has a weak shield, and gets pretty much burnt in a few seconds on point to BK, Betty, and any other blaster. Realistically, her only advantage is being a nuisance for point tanks to deal with. But we have Anara, who is simply better than her in every possible way, and even has crowd control immunity to cancel her entire kit. Nyx simply doesn't have a purpose when compared to the value every other point tank brings. Honestly, even Terminus has ice mines to make him somewhat viable, but Nyx? I can't think of a single reason to pick her. Hopefully the next champion will be better than this and they work on Nyx's kit a bit more. Maybe change it, improve her playstyle, or add something valuable to Paladins that other point tanks do not bring to the table, instead of having her be the I'm buying resilience minigame that she currently is.
Now, this is just something I felt that was going to happen eventually, due to the shop crashing so often and your skins being unavailable. Paladin's skin trading and buying system along with the currency for it, bounty coins, is now officially retired, and any skins you may have purchased were just given to you as normal versions of said skin. This gives less ways for free-to-play players to get skins, but I'm honestly not too upset, as having so many different currencies in the game felt, um, clunky. It does suck that you will no longer be able to trade skins that you purchased for bounty coins, but I honestly didn't see many people who did that to begin with, and I think that most of you didn't even know that Paladins had a way to trade skins. Speaking of skins, how are those recently looking like? Is it Horton here or is it just me? Oh, you. Or everyone in this match? Why is everyone so good looking? Help! <laughs> Life's a masquerade! And everyone wears a mask. Oh, that Those weapon. Those who do not complain are never pitied. Battre le fer pendant qu'il y chante. It's a well-known fact of life that nobody likes the French. I'm already coming out here flexing a little bit, letting you know how seriously I'm taking this challenge, so uh, allow me to slip into something a little bit more comfortable. Ah, well the majority of skins are indeed getting a bit dated, and with the lead art designer that was in charge of making all of those amazing Halloween ones, and you know, other skins that we have come to know and love, is leaving, well, I honestly have no idea how the future of skins and paladins will look. Hopefully they will focus on making better quality over quantity, and stop filling up their event passes with recolors and other saturated fluff, such as avatars, sprays, emotes, you know the stuff. I also get they need to split the revenue stream, and that's why they make separate skins that don't go into the battle pass, but I I'd rather have a longer battle pass myself, and skin updates that I actually am compelled to buy because of the quality, instead of these short burst ones that just had two skins. Although I did like the Raven mount, it's pretty cute, not gonna lie. However, why even buy skins when Paladins has recently had the mother of all bugs happen I've with tons of accounts being banned who abused it, and I've some of the more lucky ones Roblox that managed to sneak away unscathed. Possible. That bug being the infinite crystal bug. All right, we're done. Bye. I'm not doing this. We're nah, 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 no, no more of this. <laughs> Yeah, this was and still actually is a thing, although it's much harder to reproduce than it was. And no, I will not teach you how to do it. Trust me, I don't want to be banned. But it shocked me to find out how truly easy it was to do, and explained every account that had millions upon millions of gold that would have been impossible to reach even at max level. You know those uh, free Robux hacks videos? Well, these guys took one look at such a video and thought, hey yo, bro, this free crystal glitch is bussin', my guy. Let's full send it, my dude. Bro, what even is this? No way that works, we gotta try this! And it seriously worked! Basically anybody using this bug would have unlimited crystals and gold, which they could not spend. And that is the biggest giveaway. If you see somebody with like 50 million gold sitting in their bank, that's, well, it's a hacked account. Evil Mojo has said privately that they're, uh, fixing it, and have banned users who use the bug to gain an advantage. But what about all those gifts they sent, or used it possibly to fund tournaments? Or even more, who knows? Games that allow such exploits to happen usually have their economy completely ruined pretty quick. But honestly, Honestly, is there anything left to ruin here? I'm fairly certain a lot of users have simply made out like the handsome rogues they are. Pretty much the Robin Hood of paladins, stealing from the rich and giving back to the poor, unfortunate souls who still don't have their rainbow farting unicorn mounts. I know I got mine. <laughs> I'm sure Evil Mojo will actually solve this one pretty quickly as it affects their livelihood directly, and well, let's just hope for some better skins. Meanwhile, in a parallel universe where cloning is legal. I'm the cuter cat girl. Watch out, I'm very scared. Rawr! Rawr XD, bro. What the fuck? Now, before I risk running my mouth off like last time, where they didn't add a map for two years, but decided to do it the next day after I complained about it in a video, and even told everybody to give up, yes, they do actually add maps still. But it's been a while since the last one, and it's pretty bland altogether, along with being largely disliked by the community, with some going as far as dodging if they actually get it in casuals. The colors just simply don't match, and the layout makes for far too many close encounter rooms, which blasters can easily abuse, who are already strong, so yeah, yeah, just give up guys, they won't add a new map with proper layout that has a mid-sized flank route, and a few close encounter rooms that would all merge into one balanced experience for any champion you pick. <laughs> Nothing this time? No? That's what I thought, Hyrus. Now let's continue. 
management, the core reason I think Paladins are struggling. But at this point you already know I'm going to say this pretty much every single time. Ever since the Paladins history video, my opinion remains the same. I don't think the blame can be put on the dev teams or any other staff that they may have hired. Paladins has been mismanaged for so many years with so many bad decisions that they simply lost the majority of their player base and trust of many others. Could they fix it? Well, yeah. After seeing how many games such as No Man's Sky with all their issues and handfuls of players remaining could just bounce back by sitting down, focusing, or improving the core game, I believe that Paladins 2 could do the same. And to give them the benefit of the doubts, Evil Mojo has done this in the past half of this year. The game feels far more entertaining on that level. Champions except for a few are generally viable, although bugs remain and that is a huge issue. However, the majority of these bugs and game-breaking problems are clearly tied to the servers and their poor quality. Something that Evil Mojo more than likely cannot change without Hyra's stamp of approval. Meme! Approved! If Hyra still wants to save their game from becoming an actual wasteland, they will change the servers. There is no improving them without simply switching to a far better provider that actually offers at the very least basic DDoS protection. If not, they will see a higher and higher rise of server drop hackers, and even today we see a lot of frustrated streamers who will probably just end up leaving the game with less and less content for it as it becomes a completely unplayable mess. All of this due to targeted harassment in the form of dropped games. Look, I have never said something can kill paladins or a game in general but for online games this this will literally i don't mean it metaphorically or rhetorically or poetically or theoretically or in any other fancy way on death straight up kill paladins depending on the volume at which this continues and if they think that this would just blow over without them doing anything they are wrong i'm telling you this time it's different and the servers should be their top priority if they plan on having a job with paladins in the near future or players that actually play the game i can speak for myself as well if the servers remain unchanged and continue to slowly degrade i will completely drop this game it's really as simple as that now do keep in mind i believe a hundred percent that evil mojo is trying their best or their best as in they're actually doing their job I'm simply speaking from the perspective of a player that actually plays the game, and I do believe that Evil Mojo employees, at least a couple of them, should have as part of their job description playing the actual game. And not like once, not like two matches in a row. No, 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 no. I mean, you sit there and you stream the game for at least like, I don't know, five hours every single day. Then you'll get a feel for what it's like to actually play the game itself. Now, I'm not saying this ironically. I mean this in the most literal sense. It would do a great deal for the community to actually see the employees playing their own game, and as long as you pay them for working hours, there really shouldn't be a problem, right? It's not like it's a punishment to play Paladins, right? In this way, you'll also get a valuable amount of information on what's actually happening in the game and what needs to be fixed. Because I know several Evil Mojo X devs who have done this exact thing, and they quickly find out what exactly is happening in the game. And look, to send it all off, I don't mind if the game doesn't change at all. I'll still probably enjoy it from time to time, because hey, it's just another game. I understand that you have a nostalgia for it, just as I do and many others, but it is just that, a game. And unfortunately in our gaming markets, I think a phrase that uh, someone said stands out very clearly. That's just the way it is. It, it is the way it is. And in Paladins this applies as well. We've clearly seen hi -res do the exact same thing for five years in a row now coming to six. Do you honestly think they're going to change anything? I Wake just up. want to be real Wake with up. you. I honestly believe that you get what you see. This is the game you're getting. You've been getting it for six years, right? The only reason I'm doing this is to update you on what the game's actually looking like, and obviously to, well, make a video. That's about it. All right, all right. Sorry for the doom and gloom, but I'm just being fully honest with you. Now, I do have a, um... Poem I wrote for Hi Res and Evil Mojo, so hopefully they enjoy it. I may not be a poet, but I certainly tried. And now for a poem for Hi Res. So here we are at present day. Standing here, I realize, as the servers are burning and the bugs completely ravishing the game like never before, I still don't blame you, Hi Res, for you were just like me, trying to make history, making an incredible game with so much potential, even if you did make so many wrong choices. But who's to judge the right from wrong? And when our guard is down, I think we'll both agree that violence breeds violence, and you've had your fair share of hate and dismay, but in the end it has to be this way. I've cut my own path, you followed your wrath, but maybe we're both the same. You've made a great game, even if it's in flames. The world has turned, and so many have burned, but nobody is to blame. Yet it is with great shame that I admit on this day that I have and will continue playing Payload all day. As I hear the cries of your remaining community tearing across this barren wasteland, I can't help but feel that new life would be born beneath the bloodstained sand. Beneath 
the bloodstained sand. Okay, okay, all jokes aside, Paladins is probably my top 5 games. I really do love the game and it's like a hidden gem in the hero shooter genre. With so much potential that year in year out remains there. I still have a blast playing it when I do and have plans to test more things out in the game, but I felt this truly is a crossroad for the game state, pace, and even existence. Truly this year will inevitably be either a bright chapter for this high res IP and continue its increase in terms of actual gameplay enjoyment, or a final chapter in a tragic drama that people said would end for like, what, six years now? Yet it's still here with a player base community that enjoys it and really is the main reason it continues to just defy all odds. You, those who play it, and make it more fun, or possibly you, who might now download it and try it out. It weighs like, what, 20 gigs and it's a free game? So my advice will always be to just check it out for yourself and see if it's something you're into. As an Overwatch 2 player and Valorant player myself, I still find myself coming back to Paladins time and time again, and it's due to their in-depth card loadout system and fun champions like Buck, strong tanks that actually feel like tanks, and so much more. The game is definitely solid and besides the issues I named, could still compete in the hero shooter market, but only time will tell. Again, if you like this video, I have a super in-depth edited project on Paladins that you can check out in the description below. It's titled The Tragic History of Paladins. I would also like to mention that I've been streaming on Twitch, and for those of you who noticed that I've been also live streaming on YouTube, you're obviously subscribed, right? Right? So I don't have to mention that as much. But as for Twitch, as it's a new channel, I'd like as many of you as possible to come follow me on said channel. It will grow the channel, support it, and allow me to do more interesting stuff. So if you're not yet following, it's Raventrick at twitch.tv. The link will also be in the description below. Thank you for watching, my dear viewer. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, learned something, or just had a little chuckle. If you guys want a friendly Discord gaming community to join, check out the links in the description below. If you'd like to support me with merch, we do currently have some new amazing designs that you now see on screen with the classics still there. There are hoodies, mugs, shirts, you name it. There's something for everyone. Now I'd also like to shout out my channel members who help make this content possible. Just Vegito, Freya, Azrael Hodgecrom, Magma Flux, Try Die Repeat, Toby, and the rest of these lovely people on screen along with the description below. Thank you all so much for supporting my content financially, becoming members, super chatting, buying merch, and just watching my videos in general. Becoming a member continues to be the best way to support me, but it all really helps continue working on projects like this and far bigger ones, which I occasionally do. That's really it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and let me know your personal thoughts on Paladins, the game's state, the points brought up, or what you think will happen in the remainder of this year. As usual, I always read every single comment. Even if I don't respond to all of them, I enjoy seeing your feedback and it will help me improve my own content. And that's it for now and I hope to see you in the next video. And I'm addicted! So I can't quit! <laughs> I see you tomorrow.